Sorry about that. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor and Councillors. We're here today because we all have a passion for what we feel is best for Hamilton, our lives as well as future generations regarding our transit needs. Unfortunately, the LRT issue has created a divisiveness within the community to the point where boycotting businesses, slander, bullying, name calling, uh, personal threats and sheer nasty behavior has become the norm. There is also an increase in desperate measures to distort the true facts while purposely misleading the public using fabricated and unfounded points of reference. We are sick of this, and no amount of harassment will change our minds. We all love Hamilton, and this should be about what is best for all Hamiltonians, not just downtown. Based on the rapid transit vision, Hamilton City Council adopted this vision statement, high quality, safe, sustainable, and affordable transportation options for our citizens, connecting key destination points. This is not affordable, it's not connecting key destination points, and we, it's a virtually a glorified streetcar. True innovation speaks to autonomous, electric, emission-free vehicles using various forms of technology. Ford, Toyota, Cadillac, and Tesla, to name a few, are leaders, along with Rideshare and Uber. This is innovation. The $1 billion contribution is only just that, not one cent more, up to a $1 billion as per Premier Wynne's statement. It is really taxpayers' dollar as, as a payment to, uh, for Metrolinx to own a portion of our roads. When this project goes beyond the budgeted amount, which it will, more changes to the LRT plan will probably be needed. More reductions, more eliminations, or Hamilton taxpayers will be responsible for the cost overruns. Despite the alternative facts around, uh, the ridership is too low to sustain the LRT. We are a city with a growth rate of 1.5%. It will take another 50 years at this rate to achieve a 4,000 person ridership required. Growth is occurring outside the downtown core, and and Connolly and the Connolly is a good example. Don't kid yourself that it's just because of the LRT that people are coming here. It's the cost of land. Toronto, Mississauga, and Oakville cannot afford the prices. Dave Dixon mentioned in his report that ridership was lacking, and even Mr. McMeekin stated light rail needs to be done right. Um, he raises questions about the ridership, the route, design, and community preference in uh, 2015. On City Matters, the mayor said he thought the operating costs would be similar to those of Waterloo. Why don't we look at Waterloo? They continue to have a backlog of $1.6 billion of infrastructure and replacement. The water and sewer rates are estimated to increase by 40 to 60 percent by 2026. Additional cost increases to pro property taxpayers will amount to a 56 percent increase in five years resulting in the average uh, of $1,100 per household. Finally, the region of Waterloo is paying for the LRT subsidy by increasing property taxes for more than 11% over eight years. This is on the Waterloo website. The Ontario Auditor General revealed that P3 public-private partnership are too costly. Her audit reviews 74 projects in Ontario built using this format. The Auditor General estimated that taxpayers pay in excess of $8 billion more than if they were managed by a public sector. It's all about making money. Cost escalation and absence of clear financing arrangements make it difficult to assess any additional costs. Does that sound familiar? Oh, the uh, P3 arrangement involves private financing, which is more expensive than public borrowing. 
The plan calls for the use of P3s to finance the LRT. This is unacceptable. Why would we want to pay for more finance? There is a misconception that 55 votes have occurred over the years pertaining to the LRT. And since the provincial funding announcement, there have been three. However, Council has never approved or voted on the current LRT plan. Uh, let's recap some changes that have occurred. Originally it was Stony Creek to Dundas, then it was shortened to Eastgate and McMaster, then further reduced to begin at Queenston Circle to Mac. We then learned about the new underpass. James Street Spur was eliminated from the LRT plan, but BRT option was presented. How much does that cost? Um, why is it that every time Hamilton is given a game-changing opportunity that it gets ripped apart? Because there is no leadership. It starts at the top. Carol, your In time is up. Oh. <laughs> Darn it. Thank you. Uh, we have questions. Councillor Whitehead. Carol, uh, was there an uh, additional uh point that you want to make? Oh, I just wanted to, um, I, it was a quote from Mr. Um, O'Toole from the Cato Institute. Go ahead. Uh, to me, streetcars are an intelligence test. Anyone who thinks that installing a 130-year-old technology that works no better today than it did 130 years ago should not be in charge of running our cities. Thank you. Now, what, what, what I'm um, curious about, uh, and it's very disappointing to hear this, because you, you wouldn't want to see this on, uh, on either side. Uh, so the comments I heard, uh, bullying, mm -hmm. threats, mm -hmm. uh, is this actually happening to anyone that speaks up uh, in regards to their concerns on LRT? Absolutely. You just heard that uh, Melina was also bullied. So... Um, is that a tactic that's being used by the no side? Yes. Um, no, it's not. No, it's not. No. So has there been... If, if, you know, if anybody yells, you'll be escorted yeah. from the gallery. Mm -hmm. So has the uh, no side uh, threatened uh, boycotts on storefronts? No, not to my knowledge. Uh, no. Do you find it is it organized or is it uh, organic in regards to the bullying and, uh, and threats that are coming from uh, one side of this debate? I think it's organized. There seems to be a, a coalition of regular people that continually uh, bully and abuse. Shame on them. Yes. Uh, it should happen on either side. Exactly. So uh, the question I have is do you feel uh, uh, you've been in business in Hamilton for how long? 63 years. To the chair. Uh, six, six, okay, um, and uh, you've had a loyal following of customers over that period of time? Yes, we have. Uh, the question I have is, do you feel uh, that you have a legitimate voice as a citizen in this community and a taxpayer and a businesswoman to raise your concerns and risk relative to this project? Absolutely. We've paid, uh, we pay approximately, I would say, thirty to forty thousand dollars a year. I mean, I could get the exact numbers. Um, so in ten years, that's you know close to that's over a half million dollars. So you do the math in sixty-three years, average it out. We've given millions to the city, and I think I believe that we have every right to um, be concerned about this plan. So how do you feel when um, one side or the other, I mean, I respect uh, uh, both sides of this coin. I think that there's some very articulate people on the uh, yes side and yes. have done a wonderful job. Mm -hmm. uh, and I believe that even on the no side, there's been wonderful people pre uh, presenting. And that's, public discourse is okay as long as it's respectful. So here, here's the question. Uh, I heard earlier today, and I was a bit shocked by it, but it's almost a complete dismissal to anyone that doesn't agree with them. How do you feel about that? I, I agree. I think, um, you know, whether it happens on both sides or one side, I mean, we, we felt um, a we felt it um, directly, and uh, I don't think this is a democratic society. And to be um, chastised and abused for uh, voicing your opinion, uh, I think is is criminal. That, that's like communism. So uh, I, I want to highlight, because it's not that I haven't experienced that myself, but I think it's important mm -hmm. that uh, public discourse should always be respectful. Yes. And when uh, I saw a letter recently uh, sent to BIAs uh, basically threatening them, uh, if they didn't uh, line up behind the LRT, uh, that they would boycott it and red circle it. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, do you think that's Hamilton, is that a Hamilton value thing to do? No, that's unacceptable. That's that's and as I mentioned to you, that's that's this whole issue has created such a severe divisiveness in the community, and it's sad because we all love Hamilton. We're here to make it a better place, and uh, you know, to do things like that to to threaten, I, I think is um, appalling. Um, and I appreciate because I think there's the good, bad, and ugly, and, I, and, I, and my concern is that this this, this discussion has got to the point uh, where uh, it, it is, it's, it's, it's crossing the line in so many fronts, as opposed to just being respectful that there's different people with different points of view, and we may agree to disagree, but at the end of the day, hopefully the right decision is going to be made. So I want to thank you for being bold enough, as well as anyone else that uh, raises concerns, and I want to thank the people on the other side to come forward, but no one, no one should be uh, uh, discouraged mm -hmm. in a democracy from having a position and articulating that position and shame on anyone uh, that feels they need to bully those individuals. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Thank you. Uh, Brian Smiley is next, followed by Cheryl St.